in New York. Patty could, uh, the child labor laws in New York are not enforced, or they don't have them. I don't know which was the case at the time. Since then, I think the Guild has managed to organize them. But out here, she could have worked five hours a day. Uh, and they couldn't do it because she was in every shot as one girl or the other, with very few exceptions. And uh, so in New York, they worked her from seven to seven, 12 hours a day. Uh, and then she would go home and the, the Rosses, who were her legal guardians now kind of, or at least the ones who were in charge of her, they, they were her managers and her mother was in an institution, I think, part-time anyway. And uh, so they would make sure she didn't get a swelled head, they would have her do the dishes. After she'd been on, on, on the set for, she wrote about this in that book of hers. You know. Were you aware of those things that were going on? Did anybody None on the that, set no. know? No, yeah. I, I was aware that the, that the, the Rosses were, were sort of like monitoring everything that went on with her. And, and they were very possessive and, and very cautious about anything that was going on. They, they were guarding her every instant, and, and so, I mean, it, it was all right. She, she dealt with that, and it was okay, but I, uh, she really couldn't have a life of her own there. Finally, at the end of the second year, she uh, decided she was going to get married to the assistant director on the show, Harry. can't remember his last name. And uh, uh, so she ran off with him, and... and uh, left the ro losses, the losses in the lurch, the losses in the lurch. <laughs> and there was something about a church too. Anyway, so she was, uh, she, she broke free. And, and then for a while she was, uh, she, she was a little erratic for a while, but they hadn't discovered that she had this uh, bipolar problem. And uh, I, I asked her once, I said, Patty, when you felt Weird. How did you manage to hold yourself together? She says, I'm an actor. And that literally, was, she was, you know, seven, 16 when we started to work, 17. Just 17, I think. And she, she had that amazing discipline. One night when she was on stage in the, in the Miracle Worker, uh, playing, uh, you know, the woman, Helen Keller, as a young girl, one night when she was on stage, a lamp fell from the, from the grid above and crashed on the stage, and she did not react. I said to her, Patty, how did you not react? And she said, I knew I wasn't supposed to hear it, so I didn't. The Rosses had trained her for about a year. They'd have her play dumb and play deaf, and then play dumb and deaf at the same time all day, and so by the time she got on stage, when she went to audition for it, she was, she was a good actress to begin with and, and also looked good. And like, like a lot of young actresses, she was short for her age, so that was a big help. She could look 12 when she was 16. Anyway, she, um, she, she just did amazing things. When, when I saw that picture, I just, I, that moment when she realizes she makes the connection. You know, it still gets me. But, and I told her, I said, I, I could not get over that. It was so moving. When you said, wow, and she said, I just laughed. I thought it looked so ridiculous when I said, wow, wow. I said, but it wasn't, honey. Oh. It's something about the, uh, a human being realizing potential that I find very moving.